happy Friday. I hope you guys are well. I hope all is well. Um, today is a word in regards to understanding wisdom and knowledge. Um, the basis of this word is that um, wisdom and knowledge comes from the word of God, right? Understanding comes from the practical observation of life and applying the knowledge and wisdom of God to biblical, um, to your understanding and practical life, right? So your, the wisdom and knowledge that we get from God through biblical um, scripture has to be applied to our lives to get an understanding that will propel us forward into a Christ conscious. Okay, so um, today the verses that we're going over is Acts 13, 38 through 52. And Acts 14, 1 through um, 3, and Genesis 1, 18. But before we start, we're going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Thank you for your ability to, to speak to us and teach us and, and preach to us and show us the way, Lord. Lord, we open up our hearts and our minds to receiving your instruction, to receiving the blessing of your wisdom and your knowledge, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Make this word edifying to us, to me, as well as your children, Lord. Speak through me. Let it be all of you and none of me, Lord. Let it be no nerves or no second guessing, but let your word flow in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Okay, so um, we are reading from Acts 13, 38 through 52. Okay, and it reads, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sin. Right? So that is verse 38 in um, Acts 13. And this verse is speaking to um, the congregation or to the people in regards to Paul, right? Paul and Barbados was um, going around um, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And what he was talking about was the salvation of Jesus Christ, the salvation of the gospel, right? Because that's what he experienced in his understanding. Once he applied the knowledge and wisdom that he sought through the calling to his practical life or life in general, he got an understanding that there is salvation in Jesus Christ for those who are living in a, um, who's bound by the existence of our carnality, right? The existence of our physical flesh. There is salvation in the teachings of Jesus Christ. And that salvation is through a mind change, through a conscious change, through a realization of purity, right? Through a, a realization that is obtained and maintained through purity. We have to understand that that salvation of Jesus Christ is not only, um, it is a promise to us, right? It is, some, it is a gift to us, but it is the mindset of Christ, the, the um, spirit of Christ has to be maintained through a constant um, policing of one's um, emotions, right? Emotions, thought processes, the way we look at life and the way we look at ourselves and the way that we look at others. It must be constantly correct, corrected and redirected to a Christ conscious, to a Christ understanding, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that thou this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, right? So through Jesus Christ, our sins were forgiven, right? Because there is no longer condemnation to the um, committing of sins, right? That's why there is salvation through Jesus Christ. Because his um, the process in which he went through to be crucified and resurrection spoke to the, um, the power of God in our lives and the power of God working on earth, right? To um, bless us in the way forward in our righteousness. Okay, so let's continue reading. Um, and by him, 
all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses, right? So um, through him, through our Christ conscience, through pure intentions, through the pursuit of the perfection of the Holy Spirit, by, it, by the Holy Spirit being manifested in us, we are perfected into the will of God for our own individual lives and our own individual purposes. We have to stop looking at everybody else to fit into our identity or look to other cultures or um, other people to identify with in regards to knowing ourselves and knowing our own spirit. We have to take the time to dig into our own spirit selves and become familiar with our own spirit in regards to what we want and what we desire in this life, right? And those wants and those desires are directly linked to our purpose in God through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, um, so and by him all that all that believe are justified from thing from all things, right? So we have to understand that faith is what brings us into the understanding and the knowledge of self as well as God. Through faith in God, through following the teachings of Jesus Christ, through following the um biblical um instructions that we are given through scripture, we come into the knowing of ourselves, the knowing of God and the identity of a Holy Spirit. So um, beware, therefore, lest thou that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets, right? So um, there is a warning about the, um, the retracting of the grace of Jesus Christ that will happen within our existence, within our own spirits, within our own thought process, that we will begin to condemn ourselves and our spirit will be weakened by it, right? So beware of that. Beware of the antichrist spirit. Beware of um, um, preaching and teaching condemnation or even thinking condemnation over oneself because there is a barrier put in front of you in regard to your forward movement. If you put a um, restrictions on what you can do and what, what level of um, grace God is willing to give you through your journey and through your faithfulness to him in your individual pursuit of righteousness, in your individual pursuit over God's purpose in your life because your purpose is purpose to bless the world. So once you come into your purpose, you will become a blessing in servitude to God in your individual personality and gifts. Hallelujah. But it's all through a Christ conscience in which we can all come together in regard to our individual purpose, right? And serve one another. But if we are preaching condemnation, there is division. And there should be no division, but a unity of minds, a unity of consciousness, a unity of pursuit of unity, right? Forth, because when the mind is free, the spirit can be free. But first we have to understand why biblical teachings are so important to keep us mentally and spiritually and physically free, right? So, um... Behold, ye despisers, and wonder, and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you, right? So there are prophets, there are ministers that are talking about the goodness of God, which they have experienced in the spirit realm because of their relationship with God and the um, cultivating of the Holy Spirit within them and around them, which I encourage all of you guys to do. Um, the Holy Spirit is available um, all we have to do is pray, worship, and be in the presence of God, and then we will experience the um, benefit to our feelings. We have to be more in touch with our spirit self, our spirit identity, and who God is. Because when we are in touch with who God is, then we are in, um, we are in knowledge of who we are. And as long as we doubt the power of God, we'll doubt our own power. Because if we don't believe that God has that much power, then we, can, we don't believe that he can put the power within us to do the things that he wants us to do. Thank you, God. So, um, beware, um, behold, ye despisers and wonder and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe through a man declare it unto you. So understand that God is constantly working. He is constantly busy in bringing about his um, will on earth through his vessels, through his children to be used, right? And his spirit is omni, it's an omnipresent spirit that is everywhere all the time and it is working and we are the vessels to be used. So as long as much as we make our ourselves available to God to be used, that's the more power and glory that can be brought to the earthly realm in regards to his glory and his um in regards to the will of God on being brought forth on earth. Hallelujah. So um beware therefore okay, um 
And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue and the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So this speaks to the power of the word of God, the power of the spirit of God being manifested through us by preaching the gospel, by teaching, by letting God use us to speak through us, right? Because when that happens, the Holy Spirit is manifested in others and brings them understanding and enlightenment, right? The And hope and, and, and um, strength to keep going, right? So we are to edify each other. Iron sharpens iron. So when we... Um, when we take the initiative and learn the gospel and let the Holy Spirit manifest within us individually, then we are able to bring that same understanding to our sisters and brothers by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not by our power, not by our might, by the Spirit of God, the, the changes that needs to be made in the earth will be manifested. But we have to take our own responsibilities and present ourselves a living sacrifice to God and allowing him to manifest his spirit within us so that we can go forth and conquer what he wants us to conquer in our own individual purpose. But understanding that walking in our purpose will um, empower others to walk in their purpose. And as we empower others to walk in their purpose, we all become purposeful in Christ, which is what God needs for us to be so that we can go forth and conquer. Through all purity, evil and darkness is conquered. But without purity, we cannot conquer darkness. We, cannot, we have to be light to be able to conquer darkness. So they were excited, like they were like, and when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath, right? So the Gentiles and the Jews, the difference between the Gentiles and the Jews are the Jews are, um, are, um, by lineage, by, um, birthright, you know, under the, the, um, covenant, right? But uh, the Gentiles are not by lineage and by birthright under the covenant but that's why jesus christ said that he can turn stones into the children of abraham because it is by the spirit of god that things are transformed not by um based on dna or um genealogy or lineage hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord so now when the congregation was broken up many of the jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God, right? So now when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the, the grace of God. Now this is, um, this verse speaks to me in regards to the um, revelation that Moses didn't strike the rock twice in a row, but that he didn't speak to the rock in which he was instructed to do versus um, striking the rock at first, but um, they instructed him to speak to the rock the second time and he struck it and that's why he didn't enter the promised land. So we need to stop trying to do things by force and by might and understand that it's by the pure power of God manifested through us that, um, that the blessings of God will come forth, right? So we have to take our own individual responsibility in the kingdom of God as far as preparing our hearts, preparing our souls, and preparing our minds to be able to go forth and be a positive influence in society, in um, in establishing a Christ dynamic and a Christ conscious in society. We, both, we first have to edify ourselves and become strong in Christ. Okay, so... And now when the congregation, right... So, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. So see the see how the change manifested by their obedience to the simplistic um, directions of Jesus Christ. They were able to bring many people to God, many souls to hear the word of God. Now it takes someone upon their own decision to accept Jesus Christ into their heart as their Lord and Savior. But it's our responsibility to spread the word so that people can have the opportunity to come into the understanding that they need to be able to walk in the way that they are supposed to walk in the path of Christ, in the understanding that there is a journey, right? There's a journey in Christ. There is a becoming in Christ that we all must succumb to, to be able to come into the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our minds, and in our spirits, and around us, and within us, right? But there is a process, and for us to be able to lead people on that process, we must first understand and walk the process. This is the process of carrying your cross. If you do not carry your cross, then you are not um, able to experience the power of the 
resurrection and or the um the the pain of the crucifixion is which is where all the the um the glory comes all the understanding all the um the wisdom and the knowledge right um but when the wisdom and the knowledge is applied to the understanding there is an understanding that you get on that cross there's an understanding that you get on that crucifixion that attribute uh, greatly to your resurrection amen thank you jesus so um so the only rectifying factor of the laws of Moses is Jesus Christ, free to rise above the practical bondage of our physical existence. If we don't think beyond the physical, physical, we cannot exist beyond the physical, right? So we must be able to think, exist, and exist. We must able to be to think and exist beyond the physical to be divinely guided by God. This is the teaching and the salvation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's how powerful the word of God is through the Holy Spirit, right? So the Holy Spirit is manifested in us as we continue to pursue the knowledge and wisdom of God. And then as we apply that knowledge and wisdom um, of that, that is given to us through scripture to our practical life and our practical existence, then we get understanding that propels us forward to be a solution instead of attributing to the problems of society. So, um, and the next Sabbath came almost the whole city, but when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming, right? So there is a um, reason why over and over in scripture, um, it is instructed to us not to be envious of each other, not to covet our neighbor, right? Because we have to understand this is the weakness of the flesh. This is the weakest part of the flesh that we cannot control, that it comes up on us, right? And early in my adulthood, I paid more attention to um, feelings of jealousy, right? I paid more attention to when I wanted um, something that someone else had and I intentionally paid attention to this so that I can process it properly so that I would keep myself from ever getting too deep into that feeling right so I realized that wanting someone someone else has has nothing to do with being jealous of them or coveting them but it has something to do with um, them presenting to you one of your um, spiritual um, desires right and your spiritual desires can be achieved right and the observation of you seeing someone um walking in that that desire that you have is not a speaking against your ability to attain it but it is speaking to that that is something that you have to grow within yourself to become what you want to become right it, it's a testimony to your life it's a testimony to your what you will walk into right so i realized that everything that i saw and and understand that everything is not for everybody so we have to understand that it is important that's why it's important for us to acknowledge ourselves and our spirit selves and our spiritual identity in the way God made us so that we can come into the understanding of what we are supposed to do, who we are, and what speaks to our spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then, um, so they filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. And then another thing that the Jews did not believe what Paul and Barnabas was saying because it was just unbelievable, right? And we have to understand, we know that sometimes the things of biblical scripture and the teachings of Jesus Christ may become unbelievable, right? They're, they just confusing, like it's hard to understand. It doesn't make any sense. But understand that God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we have to go up further in our understanding and our ability to comprehend to be able to get the understanding of God by the power of the Holy Spirit we cannot sit at our level and not be able to understand it and just dismiss it because we are not able to understand it we have to understand that we are not able to understand it therefore we must grow in Christ to come into the understanding right amen so um for so hath the Lord commanded us saying I have set thee to be a light right okay so then paul and barnabas waxed bold right and said it was necessary that the word of god should first have been spoken to you but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life lo we turn to the gentiles so understand that somebody is going to get the word of god the word of God is for the salvation of all. So whoever receives it, whoever is open to it, will receive the blessing of the salvation of Jesus Christ. 
we are not um we are not going to preach the word of god to a specific group of people and and just wait for them to get it without preaching it into the whole world so that whoever gets it steps up into the servitude that god has called us to be right so once we understand once we pursue the knowledge of god through the the spirit of jesus christ then we come into our purpose our mission our our the reason that why we are here right and as we come into that we are to push forward into the high mark of jesus christ right the crucifixion and the resurrection the holy place into which we come to into the blessings of god right in our identity and who we are and how we can service the world and and society hallelujah thank you jesus so then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. So the word of God is first for Israel, right? It is first for Israel. However, it is first for Jews. It is first for the children of captivity. It is first for the children of God. However, if they continue to reject Jesus Christ, we will move on and the promises will go the way it's supposed to go. Somebody, the will of God will get done on earth as it is in heaven through someone through any vessel if stones have to be turned into children of abraham then that will happen by the power of the spirit of god through the will of god many are chosen but many are called but few are chosen right so it doesn't matter who's chosen who who's called it matters who answers and if you answer then you're you are chosen right but the power of the holy spirit has to be manifested within you it takes work it takes faith it takes looking into scripture and exploring your spirit self and becoming and also being set apart a lot of us want to participate and be in the normalcy of society and and seem normal and we don't want to explore our individual self because we are so afraid of who we actually are when in actuality exploring ourselves will bring us into um the power of our existence the power of our identity for so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. So we have to look at this in regards to the ends of the earth. Uh, one generation will pass away, but another will come, right? The earth will abide it forever. So we have to understand the changes that we want to make in this generation are for the next generation. And those changes are for the next generation. So whatever difference we can make while we're here will suffice for our life, will suffice for our, our service in humanity we have to stop trying to look so far into the future and just be concerned about what we can do as vessels to be used by god on earth life is temporary we have all these hopes and these aspirations and all of these things that we fight about in regards to our fleshly existence that doesn't matter it doesn't profit right so we want to establish ourselves in society to make a name for ourselves amongst people when we are should be trying to make a name for ourselves amongst the heavens right we should be trying to leave something in this earthly realm that will testify to the goodness of God versus trying to make a name for ourselves. So we take our spiritual identity and the knowledge and wisdom of God and we use it to gain understanding into our purpose and who we are and what the world needs from us. And then we figure out how we can serve that, how we can give that, how we can make a difference in the world. And um, and the word of the Lord, and when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed, right? So understand that God has ordained um, us to eternal life. God has ordained us through to eternal life through Jesus Christ, right? So those who believe will have eternal life and those who don't believe will perish, right? And perish not in the physical sense, but in the spiritual sense because there is spiritual wholeness required to sustain this world to to become a, um a, to rise above the the damnation and the bondages of this world there takes a a mindset a conscious a way of thinking a way of viewing things to come rise above but if not if we reject jesus christ then we'll just be fighting against the ways of the world in our flesh and we won't win that way we will perish okay so and when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad, right? Because um, faith comes by hearing, right? Hearing comes by the word of God. So we have to understand that all we have to do is understand the word of God and to be able to deliver it in the power of the Holy Spirit for it to manifest in humanity, in mankind, in the hearts of mankind. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into, okay, but the Jews stirred up the devout. Okay, wait a minute. 
And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region, right? So the word of the Lord was published throughout all of the region. So we talked about how the um, testimony and the life of Jesus Christ was manifested so that the gospel can spread all over the world, right? And Paul encountered his, his, um, his heart posture against Christianity brought him into the encounter that he had with Jesus Christ to reverse his attitude and his mindset to be actually used as a vessel to spread the gospel in, in all over the world. So we cannot discount the way people are in their physical, uh, mental state right now, but we have to have faith because love is long-suffering and is enduring and it doesn't keep any records of wrong, right? So in remembering the biblical de definition of love, we are able to um, execute that same love to our brothers and sisters in the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ for the um, glory of God on earth. It is not about us. It is not about them, but it is about God getting the glory. So, um, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So, um, then Paul and Barnabas, okay, let's go back. They were glad and glorified the word of the Lord and glorified the word of the Lord. So as they glorified the word of the Lord, then God is glorified. As they glorified the word of the Lord, um, the um, will of God is glorified on earth, right? So that is what we are to do. We are to glorify the word of God so that God can be glorified on earth, so that more souls can come into the purity of Jesus Christ, so that we can have a better place to dwell on in the earthly realm, not for us, but for the next generation and the next generation. We are here to make it better each generation. So um, then Paul and Barnabas, okay, okay. So, and then the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region, but the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and expelled them out of their coast, right? I mean, um, the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. Now, that is actually what's happening right now in society. Um, the children of God, the children of Israel, there is a... Um, um, a conversation going, a, a perpetuating of an ideology that Jesus is a falsehood amongst Israel, right? So in that, um, in that messaging, we are dividing each other. Uh, um, we are dividing more nations against more nations. We are dividing more concepts of understanding against other concepts. When Jesus Christ himself has done no harm to a nation, no harm to a culture, no harm to society, except but to bring people into peace and to love and to harmony, right? And that is the will of God, despite what we try to um, con conjure, conjure up in our physical understanding of our existence. There are many ideologies out there in regard to our physical existence, but we have to understand the ideology attached to our spiritual um, existence, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the teachings of Jesus Christ to come into our purity for the glory of God. Okay, so we're going to wrap this up. My battery is low. Okay. So, um, it's just so many. Every time I go back and read it, it's another word. It's so far. But the Jews stirred up devout and honorable women, right? So devout and honorable women. So we're looking at this as in regards to the women being a target in regards to against the um, spiritual understanding of Jesus Christ. That's why not only are women a target, but they are the answer in coming back into the understanding of their divinity, right? To bring men back to God because understand that men need women as a helpmate a woman it can help a man bring come back to god through the understanding of jesus christ through the understanding of biblical scripture and our um, spiritual identity right the you know it takes a lot it takes patience we'll talk about that in a different thing but um for um and then but the jews start up the the understanding of how it all applies together and how we can use it to better ourselves in unity but the jews stirred up the devout and okay but they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into iconium but and the disciples were filled with joy and with the holy ghost so when you shook and turn away from their wicked ways right and in that you are spreading the gospel of jesus christ without even like, you know, trying to push it. We need to stop trying to push it and just do our due diligence and then keep it moving, which means dust, dust off our feet and keep it moving, right? 
and it came to pass so now we're in chapter 14 1 through 3 and it came to pass in iconium right and i haven't researched iconium but these are the things that we have to research in our understanding of biblical scripture like where is iconium what what does iconium reference and all of that stuff i just want to throw that in there as a um like a study you know note for you guys to look into that and um that they went both together into the synagogue of the jews and so spoke and that a great multitude both of the jews and also of the greeks believed so we have to understand that um so wisdom um okay so paul and barnabas right so this is what i wrote maybe this has something to do with iconium right this represents light and hope understanding and wisdom breeds an open dialogue of the spirit and spirit is no respect to persons or lineage or culture or demographic or language right so in regards to unbelief we attribute we attribute unbelief to not believing in jesus christ but in reality unbelief stems from not believing in god because if we believed in god properly we will never put limits on his power which is what we talked about earlier Okay, so it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews and so spake that a great multitude, both of the Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren, right? So let's talk about evil affected. Evil affected because when you doubt the power of God, you welcome in negative thought processes leading to unrighteous, um, leading to unrighteousness unrighteous ineffective decision making right so when you doubt the power of god that's when you let in thoughts of limitation on yourself and on god and when you have limitations on your abilities and god's ability that's when you start making bad decisions right that's how that's how you are led astray into the snares of the enemy gentleness breeds gentleness um, the gentleness comes from God and the faith in his power. Faith is the substance of things not seen, right? I can't. I got to remember that. <laughs> so, um, so, um, but the unbelieving Jews started up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren, right? So you have to focus on yourself. Focus, but focus on yourself is not the answer all the time. Focus spiritually on yourself um right but the practicalities of life have to be observed because that builds your spirit self as well as understanding because wisdom and knowledge come from god but um understanding comes from life right so uh, applying that knowledge and wisdom of god will get you understanding so long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands right so as they had they had long suffering they had the ability to sustain they had the ability to stay there and speak the the faithfulness that that was needed to to get the job done right that the power of god will be manifested through them through their faithfulness so they they abode there a long time long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the lord so speaking boldly in the lord in faith and in all um you know in all honor and all praise to god for his manifestation of his spirit within you we are not taking any credit from god any credit in regards to speaking the gospel or teaching but we understand that the power of the holy spirit manifested in us will allow us to go forth and to keep growing in the power of god right so long time before abode they speaking boldly in the lord which gave testimony unto the word of his grace right so as we speak the word of god as we speak life and as we speak prosperity and abundance into our people into our lives by the power of the holy spirit we are manifesting god's glory on earth we are manifesting god's glory within us around us and through us right so um once we do that which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands because anything asked in my name of the father will be granted right so anything in the name of jesus anything in the name of purity anything in the name of servitude will be granted by god for his glory not for our glory but for his glory right 
So um, when we speak boldly in the faith of God through the teachings of the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is healing, there is miracles, signs, and wonders. These things are not easily seen because they are done by the Spirit. Therefore, the changes are manifested spiritually in people first, right? In people, in situations, in different things. God is moving, his hand is moving, his spirit is moving. So we can't recognize the changes and the things that he is doing right away. But if we stay faithful, if we stay focused, we will be able to see the manifestation of his power in our lives and around us but we have to be have we have to continue to walk in faith right so um the last verse we're going to go over is genesis 118 because it ties into as 14 so genesis 118 says and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the dark darkness and god saw that it was good right so god created us to be good god created us to be able to divide the light from the darkness but we cannot divide the light from the darkness if we are unable to recognize the light in the darkness if we are unable to separate the light from the darkness in our own lives in our own mind and in our own spirit so therefore we have to have understanding first in life to gain um we have to have um we have to apply the knowledge and wisdom of um scripture to our lives to get the understanding we need to get to rise above the bondage of this world so that's how the miracles happen when we manifest the power of our own um and when we manifest the power of our original creation, the light within to divide the light from the darkness, we edify ourselves in holiness of a God spirit. Then we are able to edify others and divide the darkness um, from the light. So this is the salvation of Jesus Christ. Okay, I love you guys so much. Um, we um, have a lot of things going on in the church in regards to our um, projects and, and our charity projects around the world. Um, anything that you um, find in your heart to donate to the ministry will greatly will be greatly appreciated and will definitely be used to further the agenda of Christ on earth um, strictly. Uh, I love you guys so much. Stay blessed. Um, take care of yourselves. Eat well, drink water, and love on your family. Blessings.